Welcome back to the final part of Hollow Bend. Emily's resolve hardened as she drove back toward Hollow Bend. The fear that had gripped her was now replaced by a grim determination. Her brother was out there somewhere and she wasn't going to leave without him. As she retraced her route, the morning light grew stronger, casting long shadows over the road, but she knew better than to trust the daylight. Hollow Bend was a place where the normal rules didn't apply, a place where night and day could be equally treacherous. The town reappeared on the horizon, looking as deserted and eerie as before. The streets were still empty, the buildings silent and untouched by time. The only sound was the crunch of gravel under her tires as she drove back into the heart of the town. She had a plan now, a faint hope that the notebook might hold the key to finding John and escaping this place. She parked the car near the town center, stepping out onto the cracked pavement. The silence was oppressive, the air thick with the sense of something unseen watching her every move. She gripped the notebook tightly, flipping through its brittle pages, searching for any clue that might lead her to John. One passage caught her eye, the words underlined in faded ink. The old church on the hill, it's the only place of refuge, but even there, he cannot be kept out for long. Emily scanned the horizon and saw it, a crumbling stone structure perched on a low hill at the edge of town, half hidden by overgrown trees and vines. It was the kind of place that would have been abandoned long ago, yet it called to her as if it were the only safe haven in this cursed town. With the notebook as her guide, Emily made her way toward the church. The closer she got, the more the atmosphere seemed to change. The temperature dropped again and the sky overhead darkened despite the sun that should have been rising. She felt the hairs on her arms stand up and the sense of being watched grew stronger. The church's door was ajar, creaking as she pushed it open. Inside the air was stale, thick with dust and the faint scent of decay. The pews were overturned, the altar cracked and worn. It looked as if it hadn't seen a living soul in decades. But what caught her attention was a faint glow coming from the far end of the sanctuary, a soft, ethereal light that seemed to pulse with a life of its own. Emily approached cautiously, her footsteps echoing in the cavernous space. The light was coming from behind the altar where she found a trap door, its edges glowing faintly as if something beneath it was emitting the strange light. She hesitated only for a moment before pulling it open. A narrow set of stone stairs descended into darkness. Stealing herself, Emily began her descent. The air grew colder with each step, the walls closing in around her. The light grew brighter as she reached the bottom, where a small underground chamber lay hidden beneath the church. In the center of the room was a large stone slab and atop it, a lantern burned with the same unnatural light she had seen before. But it wasn't the lantern that made her gasp. It was the figure lying on the slab, John. He was unconscious, his face pale, his body completely still. For a moment, she feared she was too late, that whatever evil resided in this town had already claimed him. But as she rushed to his side, she saw the faint rise and fall of his chest. He was alive. John, she whispered, shaking him gently. John, wake up. His eyes fluttered open, and for a moment he looked at her with confusion, as if he didn't recognize her. But then his gaze cleared, and he grabbed her arm with surprising strength. Emily, you shouldn't be here. I couldn't leave you, she said, helping him sit up. We need to get out of here, now. He nodded weakly, but before they could move, the lantern on the slab flared up, the light intensifying until it was blinding. Emily shielded her eyes, but she could feel the temperature in the room drop even further, 
a cold that penetrated to her very bones. And then from the shadows, a figure began to materialize. It was the Lantern Man. His presence filled the chamber. The void where his face should be seemed to suck in all light, all hope. The lantern in his hand burned with an intensity that made the air around it waver and crackle. He moved toward them, slowly, deliberately, as if savoring the moment. John tried to stand, but he was too weak, his legs buckling beneath him. Emily wrapped her arm around his waist, trying to support his weight as they backed away from the approaching figure. But there was nowhere to go. The chamber was small, the stairs leading back up to the church, far too narrow to make a quick escape. Emily, John whispered urgently, his voice trembling. The lantern is the source of his power. We need to destroy it. But how? She asked, panic rising in her chest. The lantern's light was growing stronger, and with it, the lantern man seemed to grow more solid, more real. John pointed to the notebook in her hand. There's something in there, a passage about breaking the curse. You need to find it. Emily flipped through the pages frantically, the words blurring together as fear threatened to overwhelm her. The lantern man was almost upon them now, his presence so overwhelming that she could barely think, barely breathe. But then her eyes caught a line scrawled in the margins of one of the pages. The light must be extinguished where it was first kindled by the hand of the one it seeks. The church, she gasped. We have to take the lantern to the church. John nodded, though he looked like he was on the verge of passing out. With every ounce of strength she had left, Emily grabbed the lantern from the slab, the cold seeping into her skin as she did. It felt heavy, as if it resisted her touch, but she forced herself to hold on, pulling John with her as they stumbled toward the stairs. The lantern man was right behind them, moving faster now, his hand reaching out to reclaim the lantern. Emily could feel his icy breath on her neck as they struggled up the narrow staircase, her legs burning with effort. But she didn't stop, didn't look back. She could feel the darkness pressing in, the walls closing tighter around them, but she kept going. They burst out into the church just as the last sliver of daylight disappeared, the sky outside now as black as night. The lantern in her hand pulsed with a sickly light, and the moment they reached the center of the church, it flared up, blindingly bright. Now, John gasped, collapsing onto one of the broken pews. Extinguish it before he gets here. Emily hesitated for only a fraction of a second before she slammed the lantern down onto the stone floor. The glass shattered with a deafening crack, and for a moment, it seemed as though the very air had been sucked out of the room. The light flickered wildly, then began to fade, the cold receding as the lantern's power dwindled. The lantern man let out a terrible, echoing wail, a sound that seemed to come from the depths of the earth itself. His form wavered, the darkness around him unraveling, until he was nothing more than a shadow, a whisper in the night. And then with a the final, shuddering breath, he vanished, leaving behind only the remnants of the broken lantern. Silence fell over the church, the oppressive weight that had filled the air lifting at last. Emily collapsed beside her brother, the adrenaline that had carried her this far finally draining away. For a long time, they just sat there, breathing heavily, the reality of what had just happened slowly sinking in. Is it over? She asked, her voice barely above a whisper. John nodded, though he still looked dazed. I think so, but we need to get out of here. I don't want to stay in this place any longer than we have to. With what little strength they had left, Emily and John made their way out of the church. The first rays of dawn breaking over the horizon. The town of Hollow Bend was quiet, the same eerie silence still hanging in the air but there was something different now, 
a sense that whatever curse had held this place was finally broken. They reached Emily's car and with some effort, she managed to get the engine started. As they drove away from the town, the buildings seemed to blur and fade in the rear view mirror, as if the town itself was slipping out of existence. By the time they reached the main road, Hollow Bend was nothing more than a distant memory, a ghost town that would soon be forgotten. But as they drove into the rising sun, leaving the horrors of the night behind, Emily couldn't shake the feeling that the darkness still lingered somewhere, waiting for the next unfortunate soul who might stumble upon the town. She glanced at the notebook on the seat beside her, its pages filled with the scribblings of those who had come before her, and wondered how many others had faced the Lantern Man and failed. But one thing was certain, she and John had survived, and whatever haunted Hollow Bend, they had left it behind for good. As they disappeared down the road, the first light of day bathed the town in a soft golden glow. And for a moment, it looked almost peaceful. But if anyone had been watching, they might have seen a faint flicker. As Emily and John drove further away from Hollow Bend, a sense of relief began to settle over them. The rising sun brought warmth back to the world, driving away the chill that had clung to them throughout the night. They didn't speak much, both lost in their thoughts, each processing the harrowing experience in their own way. The road ahead seemed to stretch endlessly, but Emily kept driving, eager to put as much distance between them and Hollow Bend as possible. The notebook lay closed on the passenger seat, its secrets no longer needed. John had fallen into a restless sleep, his head resting against the window. Every so often, he would twitch or mumble something incoherent, as if caught in a nightmare. Emily's mind kept drifting back to the Lantern Man and the strange, cursed town they had barely escaped. She couldn't help but wonder how many others had been trapped there, victims of a malevolent force that defied understanding. The notebook had offered some answers, but many questions remained questions that might never be answered. As the miles rolled by, they finally reached a more familiar stretch of highway where signs of civilization began to reappear. The tension in Emily's shoulders eased and she allowed herself to believe that the worst was behind them. But then something strange happened. The sky, which had been clear just moments before, began to darken. A thick fog rolled in out of nowhere, obscuring the road ahead. Emily's heart sank, a cold dread filling her chest. She glanced at John, who was still asleep, oblivious to the sudden change in the weather. Not again, she whispered, gripping the steering wheel tighter. The fog thickened, becoming almost impenetrable. The road seemed to twist and turn in ways it hadn't before and Emily's sense of direction faltered. It was as if they were being led somewhere, drawn back into a nightmare they had barely escaped. A faint glow appeared in the distance, barely visible through the dense fog. Emily's stomach churned as she recognized the light. It was the same eerie glow she had seen in Hollow Bend, the same light that had emanated from the Lantern Man's curse. No, this can't be happening. She muttered, her voice trembling. John stirred in his sleep, his brow furrowing as if he could sense the danger, even in his dreams. Emily glanced at the notebook, feeling an overwhelming urge to open it, to find some new clue, some way to escape the fate that seemed to be closing in on them once again. But when she picked it up, the notebook felt different, heavier, almost as if it was resisting her touch. She hesitated, then flipped it open to the last page, the one she had never bothered to check before. The handwriting was different, jagged and hurried, as if written by someone in a panic. The words made her blood run cold. You cannot escape. The light will always find you. You may leave Hollow Bend, but Hollow Bend will never leave you. 
the car suddenly jerked to the side as if something had taken hold of the wheel. Emily fought to regain control, but the vehicle seemed to have a mind of its own, pulling her off the road and down a narrow, overgrown path that hadn't been there before. John woke up with a start, his eyes wide with fear. Emily, what's happening? I don't know, she cried, struggling to keep the car on the road. It's like something is controlling the car. The glow grew brighter, closer, until it surrounded them, casting eerie shadows that danced across the fog. The road ahead twisted and turned, but Emily could barely see where she was going. The car plowed forward, deeper into the fog, deeper into the unknown. And then, just as suddenly as it had begun, the car came to an abrupt stop. Emily and John sat in stunned silence, the only sound their heavy breathing. The fog was still thick around them, but the glow had faded, leaving only darkness. Emily turned to John, her voice barely above a whisper. Where are we? John looked around, his face pale. I don't know, but it doesn't feel right. They both stepped out of the car, the cold air biting at their skin. The fog swirled around them, making it impossible to see more than a few feet in any direction. There was no sign of the road they had been on, no sign of anything familiar. And then, from the darkness, they heard it. The faint, rhythmic sound of footsteps crunching on gravel. The sound grew louder, closer, until the glow reappeared, dim at first, but steadily growing brighter. The light of the lantern held by the same shadowy figure they had thought was gone. No, no, this isn't possible, John whispered, backing away. Emily's heart raced, her mind scrambling for a way out, but there was nowhere to run. The figure stepped into view, the void where its face should be as dark and empty as ever. The lantern's light bathed them in its cold glow and the air grew thick with an unnatural chill. The lantern man raised his hand and the light intensified, blinding them. Emily tried to shield her eyes, but the light seemed to burn through her, filling her with an overwhelming sense of dread. She could feel herself slipping away, the world around her fading, becoming something else, something darker. And then, in the final moments before the light consumed her, she understood. The curse of Hollow Bend wasn't confined to the town. It was something that lingered, something that clung to those who encountered it, following them wherever they went. As the light swallowed them, the last thing Emily heard was the echo of the lantern man's voice, a whisper carried on the wind. Welcome back to Hollow Bend. The world went dark, and when the light faded, there was nothing left but the thick, impenetrable fog swirling in the eerie silence. Hollow Bend had claimed them, just as it had claimed so many others before. The town remained as it always had, forgotten, cursed, waiting for the next unfortunate soul to stumble upon its hidden horrors. And somewhere in the depths of that fog, the Lantern Man continued his endless vigil, forever bound to the darkness, forever waiting for the light to find its next victim. This story is fictional and for entertainment purposes only. Thank you for following along with me. Please subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of my videos. Thank you for watching and I genuinely appreciate you all.